Well, here we are. This is the sixth time we have gone down to Cozumel since we started doing YouTube. I wanted to do it a little bit different this time. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a different approach. It's the reason why I'm introducing this, this series like this here and now as opposed to the way I normally jump into it. This is the sixth time we've done this on YouTube, but it's the 12th or 13th, or I don't even know how many times we've actually been down to Cozumel. We've been doing it for like 15 years. I wanted to provide some insight and a little bit more information for people who would be interested in actually going and making that trip on their own. Instead of just bringing you along, I want to provide some insight into the things that we've experienced because we've learned some hard lessons along the way at times. We've made some mistakes. Editor Stanley is going to pop in and I'm going to give you some behind the scenes information on what we went through because there was a couple of times where things happened that doesn't always happen on camera. So I'm going to give you some behind the scenes insight into the things that we experienced, the mistakes that we made, and the information that I wish I had before we went. I hope that you enjoy this experience with us. We put our heart and our, and our soul and everything into these videos that we do, so I do hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if there's something you want me to fix, I'm happy to do it. Or if you have any questions about this trip, I am happy to answer every single comment that I get. Without further ado... Here's Cozumel. Are you just taking the time of my life to get free stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Rachel got us bumped up. <laughs> I did last year. I didn't do it this year. No longer zero class, mother <laughs> It's <laughs> So we got stopped by the uh, metal detector over at the uh, TSA. And, well, Rachel and I made it through okay, but Savvy had some issues. We're not sure if that was the glasses, or the braces, or the charms on the shoes, or all of that combined. So just a little bit of a pro tip, when you get out of the uh, airport, when you land down here in Cozumel, they are going to absolutely grind you for a taxi, a shuttle, a car rental. Like you have to run through a gamut of people trying to sell you stuff. So we always make this walk down the road to the, uh, the car rental payless budget. There's like three or four options right here. It's like a one block hike. I hate having to deal with all those salesmen as you exit the terminal. All right, the rental car thing. That ended up kind of uh, sucking. I want to give a little bit of insight into why my situation sucked and how you can maybe avoid that. I always walk away from the airport to go rent a car because I get really claustrophobic when you're in there. It, they really do try to pound you to, to rent a car there. So I walk away and I want to go to the business across the street where it can be a little bit more calm and relaxing. And I feel like I'm getting a better deal. I probably need to revisit that and see if that's for real or not. So when we walk out of there, the first place that we always come to is Budget Rent-A-Car. I have had two issues with them. Three years ago, we rented from there, did our thing, had no problems. When we rented the car, the tires were old. I wasn't gonna drive the car dangerously, so it wasn't that big a deal. When we returned the car, they told me that I had damaged the tire. This is the tread, mind you. Like, it was all torn up tread from being an old tire, not from me driving recklessly. They told me it was my fault, it had been my responsibility, and that I had not mentioned that when we did the first checkout on the car when we first rented it. I paid for the tire. And I bought them a brand new tire on that car, and... Um, a little upset about that. Didn't have any problems renting from last year, but then this year we didn't drive the car much. I wanted the ability to drive Rachel and Savannah wherever, whenever we wanted, but we ended up driving three times in that car. Once from the airport to the hotel, which is the footage you're about to see. One time we drove over to the money bar, not very far of a drive, you'll see that video shortly. 
and then we drove to return to the airport. I put $5 in the tank. After those three drives, the way that the meter works in the car to tell the gas is like just these four bars. It's like a quarter tank, a half a tank, three quarter tank, and a full tank. When we got it, it was at three quarters of a tank. And when we returned it, it was at half a tank. Despite me putting $5 into the gas for the car, it didn't completely fill up that third mark. So yes, I'm in the wrong in that I should have gone back and filled it up more. We are literally talking about $2 worth of gas that I needed to have put into the tank in order to fulfill the requirements for this third bar of gas. They charged me $35 because I didn't have the little mark on the gas meter. Just going to go ahead and, you know, put my side of the story out there and understand there are two sides of the story. I'll let you make that decision on your own, but I did want to go ahead and put that story out there. And I am going to go ahead and say that, you know, obviously they lost our business. We are not going to be returning to budget despite having been going there for, you know, whatever, nearly 10 years. It was gorgeous. <laughs> it was sunny one day. I know it makes you mad, but I like this weather. I'm good with it. Driving along here, and we saw a water spout. Look at that guy. Yeah, we had to wake Savvy up to catch that. And I wanted to stop and see this gorgeous surf. We're on the other side of the island, kind of exploring, just seeing how things are, because the wind is. Uh, we're on the lee side of the island here today. I wanted to see what the what the surf and everything looked like on this side. So it is that time. We got to see how awesome the room is. Check in time. What are we thinking? Yeah. Nice little garden tub. Yeah, bathroom's nice. It does come with room service. I thought that was kind of nice. They got food like all day long. Savannah's over here watching her Spanish soap operas for novellas. We did get two beds. That was a bonus. No beer in the fridge. That ain't good. Here's what you're paying for. It's a little weird because we're not used to being this far over. A little weird. A little weird. Also, that's more readable. So we've got the cruise ships out right here yeah this is a little bit closer in town like a little bit less secluded Grand Park Royale is our favorite and that's the place right next door over there like whatever on the other side of that pier it's Grand Park a little bit loud out here I think for the price it's a decent decent yeah. place We've stayed at a bunch of different hotels in the you know many years that we've been doing the whole Cozumel thing. And if you want information on those, I'm not gonna get into that here and now. More than welcome, check out the other videos that we have done. This time around, we stayed at a place called El Cid. El Cid is an all-inclusive hotel. It's right on the edge of town, right by where they park all the cruise ships and stuff like that. And there are pluses and minuses to that. For one, if you want an easy snorkeling experience, it's pretty cool because you do have those cruise ships that kind of block the currents and everything, so it's a lot more calm there. It's easy to get in and out. The entrance to the water right there in front of the hotel is very easy at El Cid. The food is good. It's not very big. Not gonna be a whole lot of people there. They've got their own beach. They've got some activities for you to do. You do get to drink all day long all you want. That's totally cool. They have no problems with that. It is only one bar, so you might have just a little bit of a wait, whereas if you were at Grand Park, you're gonna have like 17 different bars that you can swim up to or walk up to to get a drink. You've only got the one on this one, and you have to be in the jacuzzi 
easy to get up to the bar, if that makes any difference. Now, I will say, this is one of only like two warm jacuzzis that we have ever experienced in Cozumel. It was really, really warm. But if you want to sit back and relax in a nice warm jacuzzi, this is one of the few places you're gonna find one. If you just want a hotel to hang out at, El Cid will work totally fine. And if you want an all-inclusive, but you are still going to be going out to the island and enjoying yourself at Chonkanob and at Park del Sur and all of these different places that you have to go to, dude, El Cid will work just fine. Checking out the grounds here for the first time. Seeing what this place is all about. It's really rough right now, like a lot more rough than normal because the wind's coming out of this direction, which makes the other side of the island really nice. There's a big scope in the inside, that's it. You can put my bag into my grand The What I see right there is that reef thing. Yep, perfect. Yeah, that's going to be great for snorkeling. Have you ever seen those ones You can hear that wind is it's ripping right now. Snorkeling. Not a bad little snorkeling spot <laughs> for sure. Uh, dinner was good. I'm at the lunch. I think it's cute. It's small. The rooms are smaller than the groundwork. Yeah, the grounds are beautiful. They're really pretty. They're really clean. You can just walk out of the hotel to do a lot of your shopping. Cruise ship shopping, so it's going to be more expensive. You are in the vicinity of the cruise ships. Like right next to them. Because we're in the vicinity of all the cruise ships, cabs are going to be more expensive here. All in all, not a bad little place. I would definitely stay here again. Thank you so much for watching. Come join us for another adventure. It's going to be for you right up there. And of course, I've got that whole playlist of uh, uh, Cozumel adventures we've done. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video.